This is a video on fixing a broken tachometer on a 1980s Mercedes diesel. 300D, 300SD, 300TD, or 300CD. Uh, basically all the same systems in these early 80s Mercedes-Benz cars. Um, I'll take you through debugging it, figuring out what's wrong, and possible solutions. Does your Mercedes diesel tachometer act like this? At idle, it jumps up and down for no reason. Sometimes maybe it flatlines, it doesn't turn on at all. Maybe it worked once before, it doesn't work. Maybe you looked online and somebody told you to shove a piece of paper or cardboard or a coin into its tachometer amplifier. And it worked for a while, but then it keeps jumping up and down like this. Well, I'm going to teach you how to fix this. It's actually not too hard. I'm going to break this video down into three different pieces. First, we're going to start by understanding how the system works. Then we're going to look at some of the solutions that you can apply to fix your tachometer. And finally, we'll end up with some comments on how to fix an 84 or 85, which is a different system. Your system is made up of three different parts. A crank sensor that picks up a magnetic pulse every time your crank rotates one time around. An electronic amplifier, a tachometer amplifier in the middle, which basically amplifies the pulse and makes it into a digital signal that is read out by. A third piece, your gauge and your dashboard which gives you a needle position. The magnetic pulse that's coming off your crank balancer, here is an image of it, uh, basically gives you a pulse every time it goes around, and sometimes this thing gets dirty, has to be cleaned off. Other times the sensor gets bent a little bit too close to the pin, sensing pin, so when the pin comes around, it crashes into the sensor and destroys it. This has happened on a lot of older cars that have been messed around with. Or sometimes the sensor is bent too far away from the crank pin and uh, you don't get enough of a signal. The signal is picked up on this little sensor. This is a new one, no cuts on it. It's in good shape. It's not dirty. It's actually brand new out of the bag. On the other end of the sensor, you have a connector. This is the old connector. Um, it was made out of a white kind of urethane plastic that has worn out over time. It's this one. You can see it's crumbling apart and the pins are loose inside it. Uh, it needs replacement. Uh, loose connections will give an intermittent signal on your tachometer. Here is a uh, closer image of the replacement plug and sensor with the old cracked up one right next to it you really want to replace this thing to make sure that you get a good coherent signal coming into your tachometer amplifier this is the part number it's still available from mercedes-benz you can get it at a variety of online vendors but um this problem is not terribly common maybe one out of ten of the cases are this way when your tachometer doesn't work nine out of ten are basically this guy right here this is your tachometer amplifier it's the basically the brains of the system it sits on the driver's side fender on the inside under the hood uh, looks like a little black trash can contains a uh, piece of 1980s electronics which was relatively well designed at its time but you know it's been 40 years now and the systems have just decayed they they are old the solder is cracked up and disintegrating there's corrosion there's um, overheating and over time this thing just has broken down uh, it's lasted very well given what it is however uh, they need replacement now the little piece of electronics just has not survived 40 years well the bad news is the tachometer amplifiers are no longer being made by mercedes-benz the good news is you can buy a replacement from me I market this on eBay. Uh, it's a digital tachometer amplifier that can digitally amplify your crank signal, put it out onto your tachometer gauge, and replace the existing tachometer amplifier. It's a plug and play system. You basically pull out your old system, plug my board in. Here is my amplifier in action. You get a solid light to tell you your battery and your fuses are good, you have good power. You get a flashing light to tell you that your signal is coming on through from your sensor and it's a good coherent signal into your amplifier.
Once you uh, plug the system in, you're able to remove the electronics from your old cap. You can slip your new cap down over the new electronics, and basically you end up with something that looks like the OEM installation. But what you really have is a high-tech DSP, digital signal processed controlled system, that's modern and that works much more reliably than the older system. Once in, your tachometer will work something like this. Needle sweep to show your gauge is working properly. And go. Smooth idle, needle is no longer jumping. That's the way it should be. I'm going to finish up with some comments on what to do if you have a 1984 or 85. I don't really sell a solution for this because it's a totally different electronic system that they upgraded to on the 84 and up cars. But um, the sensor's different. There's no tachometer amplifier. But the good news for you is that there are two common problems with these systems and the fixes are free. You actually don't have to buy anything or put anything on. It's just a matter of cleaning up your system and repairing it. The two systems are different. You have a 14,000 hertz full scale input and a three pin tachometer on a 1984-85. As opposed to the 82, which is a 6,000 full scale impulse with a two pin tachometer. You can also tell the difference by looking at your tachometer amplifier socket. On pin 3, you see a metal connection in here. This is on an 81, 82, 83. This is the old style where the signal is coming from the tachometer amplifier, this plug, to your gauge on pin 3. On an 84, 85, you don't have this pin because it doesn't really use this hardware. This is kind of a useless piece of hardware on a 8485 that's actually put in just so a mechanic can look at your RPM. It was a way for servicemen to basically plug into your car like a pre-OBD system that you could look at the RPM sensor input off the front of the uh, crankshaft. However, it does not have this connection so it can't really be used with the um, old tachometer amplifiers. The other thing to look at is on an 8485, you have this short cap. You don't have the tall cap, basically meaning you have no electronics, no connection. The short cap um, is there to basically provide access for a mechanic to get RPM signals. So if we take a look at what goes wrong with these systems, very commonly there's something called an overvoltage protection relay on an 84 and 85. You can access this by going in through your glove box, basically remove the little rivets around the outer edge of your glove box, pull it out, and you can see in the back on the right hand side bolted to the uh, wall of the, the car, this little relay Sometimes the relay goes bad, but I found that this fuse often goes bad. It burns out when the car is overvoltaged. And if you just replace this fuse, it'll often bring their tachometer back to life. And it's a free fix. Fuses are just standard ATC automotive fuses available at AutoZone and other stores. The second problem is this whole system is also hooked to a brain box. Um, an EGR computer, which is on the passenger side kick panel uh, next to the passenger's right leg um, or right foot. Basically, this computer has a plug on it that, that sends the tachometer sensor signals to your tachometer on an 84 or 85. And these little connections that are on this thing up at the top, they get dirty. So what I would suggest doing, if you don't have a tachometer signal and your relay is good and your fuse is good on top of your overvoltage protection relay, take a look at the connection on top of this guy. They're very often corroded. You can brush them up with an old toothbrush and clean them and miraculously your tachometer will work again. So these are two free fixes for the 84 and 85 owners. I won't be selling you anything, but you better take a look at this and uh, maybe you'll be able to get your system running again. Okay, well that's it for the video. So happy motoring to you guys. Enjoy your W123, 300D, 300SD turbo cars. Hope you can get your tachometers working well and uh, enjoy your day. Hope this was informative.